So, Congressman, first of all, I'll just ask you, what do you think of this move by the White House on the Strategic Petroleum Reserve? Is this uh, a worthwhile step in its own, or does it need to be step one of a bigger policy change? Well, Gary, first, thanks for having me. And uh, as I said before, we need to address inflation. It's affecting families uh, across the country, and uh, everybody, everybody's feeling it. And that, that's a, an immediate action, but we also need to look to the future. And I think the, the Build Back Better Act, uh, by making health care more affordable, capping the cost for prescription drugs, lowering the cost of, of child care, is a step to that long term. Uh, we need to do both. This was an important step to take today, but we also need to look to the future. America's second most powerful Joe, Joe Manchin, just put out a statement a little while ago in which he called this a strategic policy, an important policy band-aid. Um, would you like to see the administration take a more robust uh, strategy on domestic energy production to, you know, prevent this kind of thing from popping up in the future where we're having to, you know, deal with OPEC and having to work in concert with, uh, you know, international allies as opposed to saying we can try to fix this more directly on our own? Yeah, again, it's, it's the short-term, long-term conundrum. Uh, we can take steps today, and, and this is one that the president has taken today, and there, there's other things certainly that the administration can do. But long-term, by increasing the potential for electric vehicles, uh, building out the electric vehicle start charging stations, increasing the uh, innovation uh, potential for American companies to bring new vehicles to market, all of that is going to lower the, the risk that we're going to have uh, oil surges in the future because our cars won't be dependent on oil for uh, powering their engines. Your fellow Midwestern Democrat, Alyssa Slotkin, was quoted in The Times saying that Thanksgiving week is going to be more expensive by a long shot than last Thanksgiving. Kitchen table issues affect Michigan and the Midwest more than any other national issue going on in Washington. A fellow Midwestern Democrat, I, I, you know, I heard you there, it was interesting, linking the electric car provisions, obviously, uh, in the, in the two-track economic plan here to this crisis. Are, are you confident that the work you're doing in Washington, trying to pass these bills, is connecting directly to the concerns of the people in your district in Illinois? I'm confident that will. We need to let our voters, our constituents know that we understand the challenges everyone's facing today, the challenges of, of rising prices, the challenges of making sure people can safely get back to work, that our communities uh, can remain uh, safe and secure, at the same time that uh, people understand that we're also looking to make the future better. Uh, and, and I think with the uh, legislation we passed, the American Rescue Plan passed in, in March is having a huge impact today. It means families are able to gather for Thanksgiving, which we couldn't do last year. Uh, and the infrastructure bill that the president signed into law last week means that uh, our infrastructure is going to improve. That's better highways, better airports and seaports, addressing uh, 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 storm uh, water management so communities don't face flooding every time it's, it rains. Uh, there's lots of things that we're doing. Again, it's a matter of taking action today and, and addressing immediate needs, but also always looking to the future. I'm trying to ask every member I talk to about this, but especially since you guys passed the BBB on Friday, return to your district, what are you hearing from your constituents about that bill and what specific provisions are you selling to your constituents? For so long, we were talking about reconciliation bill, $3.5 trillion price tag, you know, BBB, an acronym price tag process. What are you selling in that bill to your constituents? Yeah, I've been talking about this for, for months in my district, and I never talked about process or specifically the price. What I talked about is what are the policies? This is the largest investment we've had in, in addressing climate change in our nation's history. It's the largest investment in affordable housing. It's an investment in, in making health care more affordable. It caps uh, seniors' drug expense at $2,000. For families that are paying $1,000 a month today on insulin, uh, they're going to be paying no more than $35 a month. These are things that have immediate impact and, and will change people li people's lives for the positive. So what I'm hearing is that um, or what I'm talking about is what we're doing and how we're doing it in a, a constructive way, a responsible way. Uh, we've made sure that this bill is paid for. Uh, but also I, what I'm hearing is that people want to see Congress working on their behalf, addressing the everyday issues that we're facing today, those kitchen table issues that Aly Alyssa Slotkin talked about but also making sure that our kids' future is secure and the sacrifices our parents made for us are worthwhile and are going to deliver a good future for our children as well. Did congressional Democrats make a mistake somewhere along the way to allow the process to become so much about what, what, was it, what this bill was rather than what was in this bill? I recognize I opened myself up to a significant media critique here, but I think that's part of this, too. It seemed like Democrats lost the thread on this bill for a little while, and now you're trying to get it back. 
So, well, look, I, I'm involved with the New Democrat Coalition. These are, are the pro-growth, moderate Democrats. And we've always been talking about what this bill does and focused on delivering results for the American people. And I think that that's where we ultimately got to. Yeah, it's an unfortunate reality as we're trying to talk about big things. You make simplifying statements, you make simplifying assumptions, and it's easy to get focused on the size of the bill or, or the, the name reconciliation or whatever you might want to call it. Uh, the fact of the matter is, because of the unwillingness of Republicans to join us in, in making health care more affordable and raising children out of poverty and, and bringing health care um, or, or, or education to, to more young people, um, we have to do this with 50 votes in the House. That dictates the process. But what really matters is the substance, and the substance is what the New Dems have been talking about. It's what I talk about when I'm home. And in the, the end of the day, it's what I think people will talk about and what they care about. 50 in the Senate. We knew what you meant. I want to ask you another question yeah. quickly about redistricting. According to the Washington Post, in the 15 states that have finalized their map, the number of competitive seats across those states goes from 23 to 10. In Illinois, it looks like Adam Kinzinger, who's now announced he's not going to get uh, you know, run for re-election anyway, would be squeezed out of his district had he run. Does this process that we're seeing right now, do you think it's going to lead to a more or less polarized Congress, whoever's in control, come next year? Yeah, unfortunately, we've seen gerrymandering lead to uh, increased polarization for generations now, and I think we're at a, a peak of polarization. Uh, it's difficult to get people to talk to each other, whether that's in the House or, or back home. Uh, I know it's something I'm committed to, reaching across the aisle, working together. I'm proud to be part of the Bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus, which is 29 Democrats, 29 Republicans. Uh, I say at home, I run as a de Democrat, but I represent everyone in my district, Republicans, Democrats, and all those in between. And I think we, we need more of that. Um, I won my first race by 1%. I lost to the same guy by 2% two years later, and, and I won the rubber match by 5%. The debate we had in those elections, talking about the issues that matter to the folks in this district, I think really make a difference. And I think it's good to have, I, I, I would love to see more independent drawing of districts across the country. It can't be unilateral, unilateral disarmament of, of any one side. Uh, but I think but people are better served. I know the folks in my district, I mentioned I, I, it was win by one, lose by two, win by five. But my last two elections, I won by 28 and 31. That's not because the district changed. It's because people got to know me and know that I'm fighting for what they care about.